Hello everyone and welcome to our discussion of budgets for our projects in Design Manager. My name is Brad and I'll be hosting the demonstration today. If you have questions during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions pane on your GoToWebinar panel. If the question is outside of the scope of today's discussion, please email them to support at designmanager.com. Lastly, if you miss a portion of the webinar or want to review any of our past discussions, go to our help center at knowledge.designmanager.com, select the webinars menu, and go down to recorded webinars, and you can view all of our past discussions at your leisure. In general, the creation of the budget is done prior to even the inputting of specifications and, of course, creating a proposal, purchase orders, etc., and is used to establish the overall framework and scope of the project. For our discussion today, we'll be using the Hilson Pocono project, as we can see here, for our example, and I've pre-configured some of the information in the sake of maintaining our schedule, but we also uh, get to put in some necessary budgeting figures ourselves to gain a deeper understanding of the process as a whole. Creating a budget for the project first begins with the project itself. A budget can be entered on the project window project tab, as we can see right here. So let's imagine that our budget for the Pocono home is $50,000. We save our project. We can also see it on our projects grid on the budget column to the far right. Within a particular project, however, the budget amount can also be set for each location within the project as we begin to allocate the total budget for the different areas of the home. I've already gone ahead and set budgets for our guest bedrooms and the master bedroom. So we can see on our guest bedroom one, I've input a budget of $1,000. And you can see the budgets for the guest bedroom two and master bedroom, again with the budget column on the right hand side of the spec grid. Let's create another location. For, hmm, how about the master bathroom? And let's go ahead and input the remaining $10,000 of our overall company budget. Remember, a location within the project doesn't have to be physical locations like we have for the guest bedrooms and uh, bedroom and bathroom. It can be conceptual locations such as time, design fee, reimbursable freight, etc., all of which can have their own budgets as well. Now, let's take a look at the very important budget document at this stage. So we'll go to reports, and as usual, I've already saved the reports we'll be working on today under our favorites tab so we can access them easily. And let's print our budget report for our Hilson Pocono home. And here it is. So we've already created a clear, concise budget for the client with very little data entry. And we can see our project total budget and where it's going to be allocated throughout the home. Now, if we fully did not distribute the entire budget, Design Manager would show that as well. So let's imagine that our project budget was, oh, I don't know, let's say 75,000. We print the budget analysis again. Now we can see all of our locations, the budget has, remains unchanged for those, but we have an additional line automatically created for our unallocated remaining budget of the difference of the 25000 So the design manager will always keep you abreast of how you're allocating the uh, overall budget to the various locations. Let's go ahead and bring our budget back down to 50000 There we go. Now, as the initial budget may be approved, we can start adding our actual design concepts into the project and further enhance the budget document. Let's take a look at our guest bedroom and the examples that I've added I may even have more information than, you, than necessary. It could be very generic merchandise items, such as sofa, side chairs, or coffee table, uh, rather than all of the information that I've added already. Let's go ahead and edit our items and we'll actually input the individual item budget on the item window into the unit budget field. 
So let's say we add 800 for the uh, unit budget of our, our um, island pattern. And let's say we have a thousand dollar budget for our sofa. We have four pillows, so I could put in a unit budget. And notice that Design Manager automatically calculates the extended budget. And it works in reverse as well. So if our budget was a total budget for the pills was 400, Design Manager would recalculate the unit for us as well. So you can enter in to either mechanism. Let's go back to our 75. Now we have our sleigh bed. Let's say that's 3,000. And finally, we have our arrowroot fabric. So let's put uh, $22 per yard. Great, so now we've added the budget all the way down to the specifications themselves. And you can see also, if we look at our items on our specification grid, we can see the budget listed on the far right as well. So the budget column is always available for the project location and item levels. Now let's see how our budget document is rounding out. Print it for our Helsin Pocono home. And here we go. Now we can see each of the items within the location listed with their unit and extended budgets in a very professional presentation. So we can see all of our guest bedroom. Here are all the items that we added our budget into. And we can even see an unallocated remaining budget for the guest bedroom itself. So we can see how much we still have, uh, how much more funds we can still uh, utilize out of that budget for the guest bedroom. And as we begin to add our specifications for the other locations, the items would appear there as well. Lastly, notice that we can also use our layout window. So we could arrange our locations or our items within a location in any manner that we desire. And this will continue forward onto our proposal and even our invoices for consistency throughout the documentation of the project. So, Design Manager can be used to record budgets both at the project and location level to create a nice preliminary budget. Then we can further refine the budget by adding the design concepts into each location within their own budget and monitoring the location's budgetary limits and the projects as well. After we've created our initial budget, we're going to begin to progress into the design process and we'll send the client a proposal, etc. And now we want to monitor our progress upon against the agreed upon budget. To do so, we're going to begin using the budget analysis report in earnest. So let's run that report for our Hilson Pocono home. And we'll focus on the guest bedroom. And here's our budget analysis report. So we have our location and then all of our items and design concepts within that particular location. Our first column is our estimated price. Well, that derives from the item window itself. As we can see, our total estimated price is 738, and that's where it appears on the report as well. We then have our budget figure, $800 in this example. And we have the variance. Now, anytime that the variance is a positive value, that means that we're under budget, while variances of a negative value mean that we are currently over budget or exceeding the budget. We can see that all of our estimated figures are filled in, but we have no actual figures. The actual figure comes uh, very much like our profit analysis report. That becomes automatically populated when we go and invoice the client for the goods and services. So let's go ahead and do so to see how the report will then change. Top over documents and accounting, down to our Pocono home project. Let's put our transaction description in again. Transaction descriptions are entirely optional, but I do recommend them. I find them highly useful when I go to research information that I may have entered in uh, weeks, months, or even years prior. 
and this will be conveniently displayed on our documents and accounting window next to the invoice so we can easily see what was included up on that invoice without having to, um, to uh, print it again. And we'll select all of our guest bedroom items with our tag items for invoice feature, and there we go. Click OK. I prefer the modern format myself. And here's our invoice. We'll accept the invoice to process. Now we can see it on our documents and accounting window. Then again, there's our transaction description that shows the invoice and what is contained upon it conveniently for our reference. But how does that pertain to our budget report? Guest bedroom. Now, all of our actual figures are entered in as well. So it's the act of, of creating the, the invoice that populates those figures for us. So we can monitor what we thought or estimated the price to the client to be versus what we truly uh, invoiced the client for. And each of those can be monitored against the, bear, uh, the budget independently. We can also print the report by sales category which can show us how we're budgeting versus uh, all of our accessories, or our furniture, et cetera. So now rather than uh, group, uh, sorting and subtotaling by location, we're sorting and subtotaling by the uh, various sales category in Design Manager. So we can see that for accessories, we're currently under budget, as we are for furniture as well as a total, even though our sofa might be a little bit over budget. Our, our wall treatments are uh, over budget, but the project as a whole, to this date, for the items we've entered, is currently under budget as well. So the report really has a great usefulness, both printing it by location to monitor each of the um, physical rooms themselves or conceptual locations, and by genre or classification of the good or service by the sales category format. Now, it's not necessary to have a budget created for the project or locations to have great use with the budget analysis report. For example, we can see that my uh, Hilson, uh, Hilson wine cellar, I don't have a budget displayed for the project, nor for the wine cellar itself, but I have gone and entered budget for all the items. As we can see, our dining room table here has a budget of 3500 So just by having our item budgets filled in, we can still use the budget analysis to track how uh, we're progressing against that budget. So let's put it for our wine cellar project. And we can see here's our estimated prices and our budgets and how we're proceeding against those with our estimated variance. Again, upon invoicing the Hilsons, our actual values will be filled in as well. So in conclusion today, Design Manager allows us to create both a preliminary and enhanced budget document for our clients and then allows us to monitor how we're progressing against our budget within the project against the, uh, using our budget analysis report. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today as we discussed budgeting in Design Manager. Uh, again, if you missed any of the, the webinar, feel free to go to our help center at knowledge.designmanager.com, go to the webinars menu, and go to recorded webinars. Again, thank you and everyone have a wonderful day.